Well, the main event was Nate Diaz, Tony Ferguson, and Nate Diaz submitted him with a guillotine, 252 of the fourth round. And uh, Diaz looked good in the fight. I mean, he probably won the first two, may have lost a third. And then in the fourth round, Ferguson tried a takedown, and Nate just grabbed him in a guillotine. And it wasn't even all the way on. He had him with one arm, and, uh, and he submitted him almost immediately. Uh, Ferguson had uh, been taken out his legs. Uh, he threw a kick very early and busted open his own shin. But he kept kicking, and uh, Diaz had this giant like hematoma on the front of his shin. And I think it was in D- the uh, Diaz had Diaz's leg was all red, like yeah. from from like multiple places from those kicks. I mean, he was it was a very competitive fight. I mean, it was like um, I thought Diaz was ahead. Um, you know, he was winning, I think he was winning the fourth round, so he would have been hit three to one, uh, when it was, when it stopped, but, um, Ferguson hit him with this leg kick in the third round and, and Nate Diaz, he sold this kick like more than most pro wrestlers sell things. And then he just kind of walked it off. He turned around, he turned his back, he walked away and Ferguson let him walk. What was weird is like a couple of times Diaz like just walked away like he was quitting. You know, he, like he wanted a timeout, and Ferguson just stood there, and it's like, yep. there's no timeout, and he just, it was really weird, because it's like, Diaz is like, he, he took, I think it was when he took the kick. Um, yeah, see, he he walked it off, and just like, he just started but walking he just, around he, the cage like he was He done. walks around, and he kind of like shakes his hand, it's almost like a pro wrestler doing that that thing in um in the, in the 80s, where, in WWF, where you would just like, do the walkout countout, I mean, he's walking away, and it's looking like he's about to quit the fight, he doesn't want to fight, and Ferguson just stands there. It's like, tackle him, hit him, do something. And, you know, I mean, it's like you're not supposed to give him time to recover, you know, but Ferguson gave him time to recover every time. I mean, Ferguson was, was uh, he seemed like he was very thrilled to be in this fight. Um, and Diaz, too, for that matter. I think they both liked the fight, and Ferguson even after losing. Yeah, Ferguson, like, Ferguson said he loved it, and, and uh, he was bowing and shaking. I mean, you've never seen a guy so happy after being submitted. After I mean, losing a fight, he's that, that he bowing, shaking his hand. He's so happy. Said it was great. I mean, he lost a fight that he he reasonably could have won. You know, I mean, it wasn't like, you know, it was it was a very back and forth competitive fight. He got some good blows in. Diaz got some good blows in. Um, I mean, every round up until the fourth was, um, you know, debatable who who won the round. They were all close rounds, but um, yeah, I mean, Ferguson just letting him go. And there was a, you know, there was one or two other times where he just kind of like waltzed away and ferguson just kind of didn't really go after him very hard but um that's on ferguson um and ferguson had a very nasty cut over his right eye that was dangerous from from taking a shot uh i mean diaz from a boxing standpoint diaz was was well ahead in the boxing aspect of the game and it was almost all stand up except for that very end there was a there was a point where i think ferguson went down there was a point when diaz went down well, there was a point when Diaz went down from a low kick. I mean, he went down, and Ferguson just let him get back up. He didn't try to go on the ground with him. And maybe, maybe considering the second time when he went to the ground, he got submitted right away. Maybe that was the right strategy. But, um, you know, Ferguson, I think, was, I mean, Ferguson did very well with the low kicks. You know, so that's what it kind of was, was he got a lot of low kicks in and did damage. And um, it was a good fight. You know, it was a good fight, even fight. It was a... Much more competitive and even fight than the original fight would have been, I think. I think that uh, Shemaev, it would have been interesting with Diaz because um, I can't recall if Diaz has ever submitted. Um, but, I mean, he'd have thrown, I mean, he'd have thrown Diaz around much easier than um, he threw Kevin Holland around because Diaz is smaller and, 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 um, and Kevin Holland is a black belt and still got subbed. But, um, you know, again, like, like, He's been submitted, but not in, in UFC. Hermes Franca armbarred him. Oh, but that was like 100 years ago. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah, I mean, early in his career, but... Um, yeah, so I, you know, but... I mean, if you watch the two fights, you would think that, that Shemayev would have, like, destroyed him. And he, and he probably would have, but there was the one thing of, like, well, if, what if he gassed himself out? You know, then, then you, you know, and then you still had four more rounds, but... Still, he would have been so much stronger that uh, even tired, I don't know that, like, it would have been, you know. I mean, I think he was going to throw the guy around forever, but um, it didn't happen. And uh, Diaz said he was leaving after the fight. 
He said he's going to go somewhere else. He said that the MMA guys have not been represented well somewhere else. He never used the term boxing, but he did bring up Conor McGregor not doing so well in this other Well, sport. he sort of did. I mean, he was he was pressed by Joe Rogan. Joe was like, are you talking about boxing? And he, he basically just said, you know, first he goes anything outside UFC, but then he mentioned uh, boxing, kickboxing, jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Uh, he says he's going to go somewhere else. He's going to prove he's the best at that, and then he's going to come back here again. He did say, I've had a love-hate and, and, and relationship. And win a championship. He yeah. He's going to come back and win a championship in UFC. You know, it's like he goes, like, I have a love-hate relationship with UFC, but I love Dana, I love Hunter Campbell, and um, Lorenzo, who hasn't been around in, you know, since 2016, so it's like six years ago, but, you know, whatever. And uh, um, Dana said, okay, Dana said afterwards that nobody got paid more money for switching around fights, but... Kevin Holland was celebrating how much more money he was making for switching around fights. So I don't know if that's accurate. And it's hard for me to, you know, I mean, they had, they had to throw that whole thing together in one day. So, I mean, kudos to them, you know? I mean, D, you know, Diaz wasn't going to fight the guy, nor should he have done so. So they switched around. They got Jing Liang to, you know, be the guy who would fight and, um, you know, move Chimaev up with, with um, Kevin Holland and, you know, it worked out. It's probably, um, I think it was a more attractive show in the end for a fight fan. Well, without a doubt for a fight fan. I mean, for a casual person, I think that, that there were people who were very interested in, in, in seeing Jemayev and Diaz because they're two big names, and they didn't get to see that. But, uh, you know, Diaz-Ferguson was kind of a fight that um, could have, you know, it could have been made and would have been a big fight when they were younger, but they're not younger. And the one thing with Ferguson, he's moving up to 170. And um, I don't think Ferguson is going to fare well at 170. I don't. I mean, Ferguson, I mean, he shot anyway. But um, I don't think he's going to fare well at 170 at all. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.